Hello, welcome back. We're back. It took a minute. Oops, um, but we're here. Hi. Um, of course, joined by the lovely Brit Smash, Abnormally Adam, Emma from Fan City Central, and we have a special guest today. Wow. wow. It's Nathan yes. Rojas from Nathan Rojas. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh. Whoa. We're here. <laughs> the cockiness, motherfucker. Always. Literally always. Um, but we're here to talk about Wonder Woman today. Mm -hmm. Not a single Wonder Wonder Woman, Woman, but no. we must talk about this because Wonder yeah. Woman 1984. She's a little polarizing, you know. Very polarizing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I have to know though. Who here, like I, I me and Nathan know where we stand for sure. Nathan right there. What about the rest of you? Oh, Katie loved it. Yeah, Adam Grant, it. where where are you on the spectrum? Great. Am I the only one that didn't like it? That seems impossible. I, I am a neutral party. I see where things were ishy with it, but also I agree with certain scenes like it wasn't the best. My genuine like initial reaction was I enjoyed it, but then you go back in with an analytical brain, and then I was just like, nah, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't like as I didn't believe the hype that a lot of people tried putting on it. So yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm the same. I'm like the middleman. I like the yeah. I get both parties, but when I did first watch it, I did enjoy it. But there were parts where I was like, I'm a bit bored in some parts. So, like, I feel both parties. So, this is going to be interesting because, okay. like, we've got the full spectrum then. We've got yeah. a bit of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, what are Who's we starting throwing with? down the, the first topic? Yeah. Who's throwing down the first topic? I think this is going to be between, like, Katie and Emma, and then we, us three up at the top here. We're just going to be like, uh, Nathan and I got into it over yeah. this podcast. Yeah, okay? Nathan loved it. She was in my uh, live comments, and we were just trying to like <laughs> rift off of her comments, just like, all right, well, here's how we stand. Oh my gosh! Hey, hey, hey! By the end, I feel like I got Carson on my side, okay, and a little bit with Evan. So I think you know that's not a win for me. <laughs> <laughs> what is it for me? Heed the facts. This is the fact. The listener. <laughs> Okay. okay, but like, okay, positives though. Like, if we're starting with positives, um, I, I don't have many. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hesitated? I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh my gosh, girl. I'll start with one. I don't know if you can argue this one. Please Gal. Give, give it to me. Okay, yeah, she's amazing and beautiful in whatever she does. Phenomenal. Yeah. Can't she, argue with yeah. that. Agreed. Okay, so mm -hmm. see, it's okay. We're getting somewhere, Emma. I'm not sure that had much to do with the actual <laughs> plot and film, but like, yeah, she is a human being. Is amazing. She's a human being. She says, "Oh my god, <laughs> what the heck?" Adam, can we get okay, popcorn? Wait. This is gonna be insane. Gosh, what see, is coming off. Okay. I watched this after I heard you already hated it. So I recorded it because I'm going to do a reaction for it, obviously. And the whole time, multiple times, Nathan was there watching it with me. And I really just turned my camera. I was like, what is wrong with it, Emma? What okay, is wrong okay, with so Emma? You guys have to explain to me. Give me some positives, though, because I don't understand how people like this. I don't understand the negatives of, like, it I was thought so it was boring. I wasn't was so boring. Happened. I was, I mean, nothing happened. There was no plot for like the first hour, okay? And then there was like seven billion plots <laughs> in the end. I heard and there was introduction, like, Emma. No. What do you okay. know? We got Cheetah. Okay. We got what's his face, Maxwell Lord. Like, oh, whole can I just say the way I screamed when we got a character, the character Maxwell Lord, which we haven't seen since season one of Supergirl. Right, because that was his, oh, that was him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? that was him. when I, I realized that. that, when I realized that, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe we're reusing this character. And I liked the reiter the reiteration that Pedro Pascal did in the beginning when we were setting up meeting Maxwell Lord. 
my problem was I don't think it had anything to do with uh, the actor. You just do what you're given and that's it. I feel like there was a lot with like the storyline or at least like how it was handled like with his like turning okay. into like, oh, I want the, the, the stone to like make the wishes and I'm going to be no. the wish now. Like I thought that was very dumb. Like I feel like yes. they could have like used Thank Maxwell you. Lord, but but like I feel like the character choice was right, but I think the plot line for him was dumb and yeah, that could have been handled better like like i think he was a great start for like one of the big bads because he'd be smart and like cunning in that way but i also feel like like the way that they did go was really not not the way i don't think it's any of the fault of the actors but like it was just more of like a this is kind of weird like you know but he was very enjoyable in the beginning do you think okay controversial question i guess for emma and katie because i feel like they might be on both sides do you think pedro's character took away from wonder woman in the movie oh yeah 100 percent. they did diana so dirty in this movie it was ridiculous okay although i will I... say my one positive as a brit speaking maxwell lord's kid he was the best part of that movie and that is depressing okay but that kid oh my god he can act he was so cute this is t okay <laughs> i have and you've said that a lot, and I have a very questionable acceptance to you saying that. I don't think he's the best part. Um, okay, but he really he did was... anything. Okay, yeah, I know. That's yeah, my what? Point, it's sad okay. that he was the best part. I think his last scene was his best. I mean, he's a child actor, so I'm not going to blame him, but like, I don't think he's like doing phenomenal I mean, stuff. Yeah, like... he was cute. Like, I liked yeah. his connection to to maxwell lord like i was like oh like his, oh, no, i, I like, like his part. connection to the okay adam what <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna mediate between <laughs> we're gonna speak over each other and i'm like listen <laughs> let's not have a repeat of the presidential debate okay oh my god right, i'm here for the mediation i'm here for it I can yeah, yeah. Like Brittany, you have a new button for us like oh yeah, i do <laughs> Okay, Brit. This is like the presidential, like bloody speech, like the. You know. Everyone's going no, but I need to, and they just cut the microphone off. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Okay, you know what? I think I might enact that. Okay. Okay. Brit and Adam will be here to mediate here. Let's oh my gosh. Did okay, I got a question? Did anybody? I did anybody get vibes from um Barbara and, and absolutely. Don't even finish that. Yes. Don't even no. finish it. Right. Like, yeah. I love to a wish ship. Like, wish ship. Right, yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah, where I was like, I love Steve. And Steve's, at, like, one of my favorite, like, male characters from, like, recent times. Like, I love him to pieces. But, like, if we have to officially get rid of Steve, hey, Barbara, hey, girl. You know what I mean? I like, love her setup. I love her setup in the beginning with Barbara and uh, I, um, Diana. Like I thought that was such a cute mm-hmm. dynamic. And when she mm-hmm. saved her with like the mugger and everything, and she caught her, I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. It's but like, that, I don't know, man. that was like the whole first hour of the movie, Emma. And you're like, what? You're like, it was so boring. But then you're like, I love, yeah, her. I love Barbara. An hour, okay. What, what else not happened? An hour? What else happened? Like we got that massive. Up. It was set up. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> did we just mute Emma? I'm just pleased. I'm awake. I'm on pause. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> god, you're so god you're so god, the disrespect! <laughs> and I was expecting you guys to take turns. Okay, wow. okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, Emma oh, first, scissors. and then Katie. Yes. <laughs> okay, Emma, speak. <laughs> What, I have 30 seconds on the clock here? All right. Um, yes, well, I think that um, it, this is my 30-second review of this film, okay? It was entirely boring. Nothing happened. What did happen was about 7 million plots. We had two villains, which was unnecessary, okay? There was Maxwell Lord and Cheetah. Hardly got most of Cheetah's storyline because it was too much on Maxwell Lord. They did Diana super dirty. She gave up way too quick. It was like if Cap would have given up, which was not a thing, all right? The Wish Stone had no rules and made no sense at all. Like half the time it did one thing, then another thing. Anyway, it was too much plot. They traveled all over the world. It was just so stupid. And I hated the flying thing. And it was just boring. I was really, really bored. It made me want to put on the first movie. That's what that's what it made me want to do. Interesting. Okay, Katie. 
the fly i loved the flying thing first of all i thought it was so cute and emo okay okay it's fine. do we have to turn cameras off it's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh i was just sitting here minding my own business when you were doing your thing but that's nothing here or there um i was not bored at all i thought that it felt shorter than it actually was even though it was a really long movie i wasn't sitting there waiting for it to end i loved what how Steve and Diana got to do more stuff because I love them to pieces. I love Barbara and, Diana and Diana's relationship dynamic that happened. I will say I was expecting Cheetah to be more of a villain than Maxwell Lord in the movie. However, I wasn't disappointed in Maxwell Lord. I thought he did good. I thought the time stone stuff, I don't understand the rule concept of like, I don't, I don't know what the problem is with the rules. It just does whatever he wants. Then it takes away from other, from, other from him because he was granting the wishes or whatever and it kept weakening him and it was taking away things from other people so i don't understand what the problem is and anyway i loved it i thought it was great barbara and diana forever that's it thank you okay, okay nathan. But nathan yeah nathan's next oh. okay well um <laughs> interesting um i cannot agree with it being boring because i've now seen this film three times um I like it every time. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so it's it's interesting just like going through. Uh, so I, maybe there's also like some certain perspective because like I'm not as super fluent in DC as much. Um, so I'm kind of taking everything more at face value. So like going in like with characters, I didn't really have too many like presets for like Cheetah and Maxwell Lord. Maxwell Lord going in, I thought was just going to be more of just like a generic business dude i wasn't expecting him to have more like fleshed out sense of like struggling with a kid and stuff i didn't think they were going to do all that so i was actually surprised like right from the get-go introducing that stuff i really liked barbara right from the jump um i love the stuff the most with uh diana and steve i think that's great um my two favorite scenes are both the fireworks scene and when she has to say goodbye and i love the flying stuff frankly i thought that's quite beautiful every time i get quite emotional i actually like my first viewing i have reacted to this i haven't posted it yet and it's hilarious because i did it on christmas and i was wearing a christmas hat so in this video where i'm wearing a christmas hat i cried 10 times i don't know why <laughs> maybe it's just some things hit closer to home than others but i did and it's just hilarious that i'm crying in a christmas hat 10 times <laughs> But I quite enjoyed this movie a lot. I just, I really like the core thing I always say when I'm like talking about it of why I like it so much is because I like how like, no, despite like how big of the stakes are set and like, like we go global and stuff. I, it feels like a more personable, like smaller scale story to the characters I felt I really did. And I, I like that a lot about it. I like how it's like a lot more light toned um, in like that old, like, timing mean, Christopher Reeve Superman asked that they were going for. I thought it brought um, a more lightheartedness that I think was quite deserved of a feeling in this horrible year that we lived through. So I think that was just like why I enjoyed it so much and I still enjoy it. Okay, but I have a question for Katie specifically because <laughs> no, but like genuinely I want I want an opinion on this. Okay. Because I talked to Nathan about this in his podcast, but he doesn't watch Supergirl. So, like, the end of this movie is so mm -hmm. comparable to the end of, what was the season two no. of Supergirl. Okay, oh, and yeah. Supergirl did it so well. And I thought this one was so cheesy. Okay, interesting that you bring that up because the whole, like, um, hope speech that happened, yeah. I immediately was like, oh, this is Supergirl. very Supergirl. And I right. loved it. I loved it because I was like, oh, I love when Supergirl does it. And I thought that it, they did a good job with it. So... I loved it in Supergirl, but I just thought that, okay, maybe this is me just being, like, not an optimist, but the 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 fact that their choice was either kill one dude or get the entire planet to revoke their wishes was a little far-fetched. I was like, okay, mm. eight billion people got to take back their wishes, and you're telling me that that happened, as opposed to killing one man? Like That's fair. I did really like... I I Come will on. say I liked the whole leaning into um, the truth aspect because that's like the immediate thing I think of with Diana is like truth surrounding her. And I really liked how 
that came up at the end of the movie how it was like no like you have to like live the truth like you yeah. go with it like i really appreciated that i have a question for you yeah just uh <laughs> sorry this is just our we're just doing something um but, jump in between us no it's not that big of a deal but i'm just curious because when nathan was mentioning the fireworks scene you rolled your eyes really hard <laughs> and i'm just wondering why what was wrong with it because i was having an emo moment and i thought it was beautiful and i loved the invisible jet i was screaming oh, it was I, so cool. I, I love that it. so okay. what was the that. problem I, okay here's the thing all right i'm gonna be honest with you so my, I watched this with my mom, and my mom is the biggest Wonder Woman fan on the planet. Like, I tell you, she has all the comics. She has the figurines. Like, she has everything. She loves Wonder Woman. And she – and her and I were watching this movie, and I think it was about 30 minutes of the way through. We both hadn't said anything to each other, and I was fully bored, and I was like, oh, my God. And so eventually I turned to her at the 30-minute mark, and I'm like – do you want to turn this off? And she turned to me and she was like, oh my God, I wasn't going to say anything because I thought you were enjoying this, but I was fully not enjoying this either. So by the time we got to that part, we were just so bored. We were like, oh God, now they're flying into 4th of July fireworks in an invisible plane. Like, uh, like I've seen the invisible jet like so cheesy and I love that, but just the way they did it was just, like, by the end of it, I was like, is this supposed to be, like, a really cheesy, bad 80s film? Like, is that what they were going for? Because then okay, maybe okay, I will see a little bit of it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? yeah. Like, yeah. Listen, I will say, for that, of course, like, I understand the cheese factor of the Invisible Jet in itself. You know what I, I mean? Like, it's such a, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I feel like this was a good combination for it because it's, like, the way the moment happened, it made sense for like what they had and everything. So then it was like a nice, it was a nice call to the comics, and I really appreciated that. And like the Fourth of July moments, it's just, it's just kind of cute and cheesy. Would technically, if you did that in real life, you would be blown up by the fireworks <laughs> as you're yeah. flying by, and they can see it hitting the bottom of the plane, like. Would that happen? Yes, but like we kind of sometimes step away from reality and just enjoy the little moments, you know? There's there's a thing with oh. wrestling that people <laughs> call suspension of disbelief, where it's like, you know this wouldn't actually work in real life, but you just let it go and you just have fun and go with it, where I think that also applies to many comic situations. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, because, I agree. because Emma was bored already, I think you, that's were, like, you started hating, not hating, but you were like, no, like everything started to yeah. piss you off because you were bored and you felt yeah. disappointed. So everything just, moving forward, you were like, okay. I think um, I was just waiting for the end at that point. Yeah, that's why you were like, your brain was like, nah, I don't know. You really had decided you hated the movie. You so were hate watching. Cool. You were you hate were watching. Hating. You yeah, hate like we just wanted to finish it, I think. But like, we probably should have just turned it off. But I was like determined to actually finish this film. Like, mm. Yeah, you want to Yeah, I feel that. Also, do you think that um, Steve and Diana's reunion could have been more? Because I felt like it was underwhelming when they reunited. I felt that would be it was a bit underwhelming. That could have it could have been a bigger moment. I feel because I was like, oh, is that it? Like they, at, you know, it's like the love of her life. Mm. I don't know. I was like, it could have been bigger that moment I agree for me. With you. There were I... parts, but go ahead, go ahead. no. Oh, I thought. Um it could have been bigger yeah like i wasn't expecting it to happen there like when it did i was like mm -hmm. oh or that's how we're he's coming back but i wasn't disappointed because of the emotion behind it and how she reacted to him like i thought they pulled it off that way if it was just like he popped up and she was like steve what are you doing like absolutely not but i really liked how she got so emotional in that moment so i wasn't yeah mad at it. and i like it too just because yeah. in the context of the movie like the wish and how it is it's like <coughs> they like is mm -hmm. she literally saw his face in someone else and like they alluded to that mm -hmm. with like this guy was like constantly looking at her and like she didn't like it's a metaphor like oh she didn't see him before but then as he spoke and everything she finally saw him like her witch granted, you know? So I felt like that was a good illusion. I also felt like it was over underwhelming, but also given in context of like how they were going about it in the movie, I felt like it was still like properly placed. So and here's really the liked... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go. Sorry. Um, I really liked how the scene was playing out. I liked like seeing her bewilderment and 
I, I thought like again it was like a lot more like personable like moment in the scene. Uh it didn't I don't think it like needed like a super like big reaction or anything. I liked how um Gal was playing the scene, like how her emotion was coming out. And I love the camera work of just like going around the spinning to then revealed Steve after like the watch and everything. I thought it was all working really beautifully. Oh, the spinning. I forgot about the spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Trash the camera work okay. had barely anything. <laughs> Oh, Dizzy, oh my god. Dizzy, Dizzy, they spin like one time? Slow? You're Dizzy? Time. You're acting like... Okay. <laughs> she for me, some both undeceased. So, Brit, you muted all three. I love this for us. So... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We are like the two side pillars holding it together, okay? <laughs> Literally. But can I say, I loved the whole first act with, like, Athe Mascara. Like, I loved the first, like, when that was, she was, like, riding, they were doing that whole competition thing. I loved that. That was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. That was so good. I want more. I want more of, like, that. That was great. Yeah. I, yes, I, I agree. I, I want more of the Mascara. Mm -hmm. I love the island. I'll agree with that. I didn't like I didn't like it, but I would like to see more. Of it. <laughs> I was just gonna say that we were talking about the spinning before I was muted. I was like Emma's acting like we were on the Gravitron three thousand or something, like sticking to the wall. We were spinning so fast, like we spun like five times max. Slow. Yes. But okay, I had a question though. But I had a question though. Um, so Brittany, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but during the movie, I was see, I'm also just dumb, but like I was confused by this part of I asked Nathan and he told me one thing, but I don't think there actually is like a confirmed confirmate, like confirmed confirmation. Um <laughs> but like so when Diana saw Steve. Did she actually see him? Like, oh, this is now him. Like, I see his face. Or did she just like see him in this person? Because obviously they had that I mirror. Know, she saw him in this person because like they even had that meme, that scene where Steve is like looking at me. He's like, this guy's pretty cool. And she's like, I don't see him. I see you. Cause like that's that whole thing. Right. Of, like, yeah. Looking wish. Cause like it's also, I think in the beginning at that point when I was thinking like the wishes were kind of a little bit more made sense, like they came out of prize. So yeah. he, his mind inhabited the body of someone who wasn't really like, he was like pretty much a homebody pretty much, but like it closely resembled to what Diana or who Diana like envisioned with Steve. So it made sense. And like, I believe at least because when he was talking, she, he was saying things and she was like, wait, what? Uh, like very confused. So that was evident because you see the face of the guy that's actual the right. body. Yeah. And then the spinning is reflecting. I like the spinning because it's reflective of her mindset changing of like, wait, oh no. And like, I just mm. like, not, oh no, but like, oh my God. And she finally sees Steve. Right. I, cause I couldn't tell. So I, I knew like that would have been like that was cool too but i remember when we were originally watching this and i asked nathan he said no like he sees or she sees him like actually like his face like she now just sees steve the whole time and i was like i yeah. mean either way i'm fine with it i was just confused <laughs> yeah no i felt like it was also letting the audience know what was happening because you saw a lot of yeah. diana's hesitation in the beginning of like what and he's saying things that steve would say and like it's even in his voice too and she's just like wait really and like it's it's like the audience yeah, is joining yeah. her and like we no longer see this man we see steve as well right yeah Which i also, just i felt like was good with his like i guess not really death but like his passing or an um what is it his except the, the wish revoked essentially that she yeah, no longer yeah. saw him because i liked like the anticlimacticness of it where like they had their moment and then as soon as they were done she just walked away and then she revoked a wish they didn't really dwell too much on it which I love superhero movies, but, like, when they focus too much, like, in any context of, like, too much on, like, their love interests, it takes away from the real core of why we all watch uh, superhero movies, which is for the action, like, the bit, like, seeing the superhero right. go fight the bad guy, you know? So I really appreciated that at the end, because then, like, also, we didn't dwell too much on, like, the Steve not being Steve anymore, but then it's also, like, it's quick, it's done, she revoked it, done, and now she's going to go stop uh, Maxwell Lord slash Cheetah. I really liked the end scene too, where the real guy came out and she saw him, but she was just talking to him like he was the normal whatever, like 
the whole I snowy agree. scene. I thought that was really I nice was, too. Yeah, I was yeah. so happy that they didn't try to like make them a thing like immediately after because we just lost them. Right. So I'm happy they didn't like force anything. Yeah, no, I'm glad that they didn't push that. There, it wasn't like a hey, we should go get coffee. It's like no, they're just having a nice conversation. She sees them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was nice. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So now we could get Barbara on that on that train. That's mm-hmm. all. I really appreciate that they didn't kill Barbara off. I was so scared. I was like, Would that oh, work? No. Actually, we know it probably might. They might be able to still use Cheetah. Yeah. But- oh yeah. I mean, Patty well, said she's over to it. Yeah, because like yeah. I know she rescinded her wish, but I feel like here's the plot of Wonder Woman three. Barbara, <laughs> not really intending to be a bad guy just wants to have the power and feeling powerful again so she decides to do some research about the mascara do research about wonder woman and ends up finding a way to become cheetah herself not really canon with the comics but like you know be a, you know something okay sure. yeah. honestly sure. <laughs> again hire me what do i have to do Gosh. I'm just gonna put together a compilation of every time during these podcasts so far. You've just gone. Here's what we're really gonna do. Like, here's how it's actually gonna work. And you just have like your own little corner. I'm here for that, yeah. Oh. I think a lot about these things, and it usually a, a lot of people say that they like. Unless someone you guys say that you don't like it, which is fine. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. But also, like, have I oh, said an idea it. that's been wrong? Hire me. Yeah, literally. Do like, am I wrong? No. <laughs> Oh. No, honestly. Like they should. No, you're right. Please. Hire me. <laughs> the FBI agent watching. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you're cute and single, hit me up. Anyways. Oh, <laughs> that, that's such a word. Oh, yeah. Gosh, oh, please. Gosh. Uh, I need something for that. Okay. How do people meet anyone anymore? Oh, my FBI agent. Right. Oh yeah. He'll hook you up. He'll hook you up. It's fine. Like whatever. Oh my gosh. Anybody starts, interested like, in someone that doesn't? Yeah. Oh my gosh. He sends you messages like, "Hey girl," like those nasty pop up ads. Like, oh my gosh. No. But, oh my anybody? god. Single in your area. Like... Yeah. Yeah. You know that like those spam mail that's him trying to like connect with you. Yeah. 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 They try to be cryptic. He's That's like, am I being subtle enough? Somewhere. Yeah, honestly. I need a whole message. Like, I need a whole like Zoom call. Like, let's go. Honestly, literally. Oh my gosh, do I do I want to do kind of. Um, I do want to do an episode talking about sexuality in general i just think it'd be fun um but that's yeah, not the camera there anyway yeah. does anybody want to date someone that doesn't want sex because uh, i'm here for yeah, you that that's all thing. i'm saying but somebody find one for me please i don't <laughs> anyway that's not here there. um <laughs> So Wonder Woman. <laughs> so Wonder Woman. I also saw a lot of people complaining that we didn't get enough Cheetah as... Here's the thing. I saw some people say we didn't get enough Cheetah as full-blown Cheetah, like fur Cheetah. But then I saw other people saying that Cheetah's ugly. We don't want that Cheetah. She looks bad. And I was going to say, what did you guys think of the whole Cheetah thing? What's everyone's opinions, Britt? Yeah. My opinion was I I'm not I'm not sure what qualifies as good or bad CGI. Like I feel like I have a good eye on it, but also I feel like I don't fully understand the like intensity of like the CGI and how to make that like good or bad. Like there's some things that happen like for example, Superman's mustache. That was really shit CGI. I can have an eye to know that that was bad. But Aside from like things like that, I'm like, what's good CGI? I didn't really see a problem with it. And then I saw people like, the CGI looks bad. I'm like, okay, I kind of see that. But also, like, could you fucking do better? Like, you want to complain <laughs> about like the CGI? Like, can you actually edit it to be like your standard? Do you understand how hard that is? If you can do better, then please put your resume, sign it up, and then you do a better job. But don't. Like, that's so, anyway, that's my whole techie issue. But then also, like, I feel like, personally, I would agree, like, I would love to see a little bit more of, like, the cheetah CGI. Like, the, if they would have alluded, like, her wardrobe having a little bit more cheetah print, like, that could be her cute little quirky thing we could have saw in the beginning of, like, she always likes to have, like, a cheetah print little, like, backpack or something. Well, or, wasn't like, she, she wearing the cheetah print heels at the no, beginning? No, that was Diana, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, then she had like some sort of like star- scarf or something in the white. But didn't she like mention something like 
Oh, I really like the shoes. Her. She liked Diana's shoes. She yeah. liked the shoes. She okay. liked Diana's shoes, yeah. but she never wore them herself. So okay. I felt like it would be something like, again, another like little characterization thing for her Barbara to be like, hey, I like you have cheetah print shoes. Look at my backpack. Like your cute little like, look, see, we match. Like some mm-hmm. cute little moments that give them more to be like, oh, hey, you know, like her awkwardness and things like that. The fight mm-hmm. in the, uh, the White House, I felt like would have been a great time because at that point, I feel like she should have wished for to be well because she already wished that she would be like Diana but I feel like movie wise that would have been a good time to see like transition of like maybe she's realizing the wish is already doing like the flip of like huh this is kind of going too far like mm-hmm. and then like the more of like the wish backfire and like because we saw that with Diana but we didn't really see the negative for um barbara but then she made a second wish which i thought that wasn't allowed yeah there there were no rules in this movie but i, I thought think... it, i thought it was negative in the white house because wasn't that the whole purpose of her going bad like she didn't intend to go bad but like in the white house she was kind of right, like but i wanted to rail. see more of like a physical transformation like she started to become right. more of the cheetah mm-hmm. so like so we could see that more like i'd love to see the playing of like as she's fighting barbara no, as she's fighting Diana, falling into that more of like not intending to be uh, evil things, and then you see more of that transition into Cheetah, then you get to that old ending thing, or she's on the plane, and Maxwell Lord is like, what the fuck? Are you good? <laughs> you know? And then like, he manipulates yeah. her or something, something along those lines, and then you get to the fight, and it's just like, oh, she's Cheetah now. Instead of it just being like, oh, she's normal, normal, bam! You know? Like, I felt like it would have been a nice segue, and good to see that juxtaposition with Barbara. And with Diana, to see them both struggling with, like, the negative effects of their wishes, but they're still fighting each other. I felt like that would have been much more poetic. Love That's us fair. taking to love us again. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. No, wait, Nathan, what were you going to say? Wait, you said friends that. to enemies to lovers. Oh, this, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. wish thing. Yeah. Um, like, I guess I have, like, I have, like, two, like, rationales for that. Either, I think either she, like, did, like, renounce her initial wish to, like, swap over or either that or maxwell lord took someone else's wish and then instead of transferring what he wanted onto him he did to barbara probably that's, that's what, what i think happened. Either the two. that's what i think i happened. feel like whatever it was they could have like accentuated it well like the wishes thing was very like i think that i agree with that one was like very poorly handled like because at first it's like you can make one wish and that's it like he was make like when random people were making wishes going to maxwell doing it and he's like have i made a wish for you already and like oh i didn't or i did that it was just the one thing, but then you have other characters that are able to make multiple, so it was really dumb, at least yeah, for I me, know. on how they executed that. And if that was the case for uh, the scene where Barbara's with uh, uh, Maxwell Lord and being like, I don't like, you know, like trying to like before she really becomes Cheetah, like on when they're on the plane, I felt like that could have been handled a lot better. Like it could have been more clear, and it just wasn't. It left it to the audience assumption, which. Usually when you film something and you leave things to audience assumptions, you got to at least make sure that the audience would be on the same page about what the assumption would be, you know, but that wasn't really laid out. Again, hire me. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, Britt, you should be on every film set. Please. I'll be a consultant. I don't care. Yeah, script supervisor. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay me. I just want to make the movie good. (laughs) <laughs> she's uh-huh. gonna be in the back with like a megaphone Wait, yelling at people you. they must pay you. you need to be like a consultant or something also that yeah also that yeah i was kind of on the same page with cheetah as nathan's second option if you will because he i know there was a part where maxwell he like got people's wishes or whatever and then he said like like give it to her like specific like give her the power or whatever and i was like oh, okay so he's doing it for her because he can have like unlimited with wishes from other people because he like they said um like he'll take from somebody but he'll take like their most whatever powerful thing or like whatever so that was his wish essentially so he got like unlimited whatever um so i understood that i think part. it probably I think it probably is the second one because, like, it's not until, like, after they... Because, like, they say, like, that whole, like, wish, die, like, what she wants on the helicopter. But, like, even when they get to the actual, like, um, radio station or whatever, um, like, she's still not changed yet. So he's probably going to take a wish from someone there first. And then uh, that's when it happens. So that's probably mm-hmm. what went down. 
Mm-hmm. I'm with Brent, though. Like, it needs to be explained better because, like, yeah, we're assuming these things, but it's not actually, like, what are the rules? Like, we don't fucking know. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's fair. That's that's fair. that's fair. I but I also like can kind of like see aspects that I know like filmmakers like when you're like so deep in a film you don't want to like bog down the flow of the story with like explanations after explanations. And I feel like we get a gist of like how things are progressing. Like I didn't really need to stop to question like oh she's cheated now. Like okay sure I I'm just already like in the flow of the film. I get that too. Yeah, but... I get that too. I just wanted it to flow better. <laughs> okay. Sorry. That That's makes fair. sense, honestly. Yeah, but I was I was happy that we kept her though, because I was very convinced once they were like in that pool of water or whatever, and like she was down there, I was like, oh, that's it, huh? We don't get her back. And as also, that's what I will say. I agree with Britt, where I'm like, do I have the right to say something is good CGI? Uh, I don't know. Guess it depends. But um, I thought the initial like cheetah, the whole fur look, like I thought it was solid. I didn't have any complaints, like. I, I feel like that would have been a good look. So sorry, continue. Oh no, I was just gonna put the wet fur. I thought was really cool because I thought they did that really well, and I was like, "Oh snap!" Because mm. that's really hard to do. And I was like, "Oh, like I was impressed with that." But anyway, go ahead. No, I was gonna go back to the wardrobe thingy because I le- again with the whole White House situation where she was like just in like cheetah like an outfit, not that she was actually cheetah. I feel like that would have been more warranted, again, with the segue of, like, maybe, like, as she, like, fights Diana, like, she shoves her in a wall, her eyes flash, like, the quick, like, cat eye, you know, or mm. something like that, or, like, maybe her skin, like, vibrates, and you should see, like, the spots on her arms and stuff that are bare, and then it's just, like, she, like, realizes it, but then she doesn't care because she's fighting one on but then... I feel like when she's, like, quirky before she makes her wish, you know, like, she's, like, cute little cheetah backpack, or she has, like, cheetah little sweatpants because she's adorable, or she has, like, a cute little, like, cheetah bow and stuff because, like, that's just her thing, you know, that'd be a cute little thing, and then the wish happens and she gains more confidence, and suddenly she's wearing, like, a nice hot, like, black sheer, like, top with, like, a skin-tight cheetah skirt, and she's working it, and, like, you know, she's, like, the hot version, or, like, what people view her as, like, she's, like, people think she's beautiful, things like that, and then that would make the transition into the white house more sense because she's wearing those outfit and then it would justify why she's actually turning into a cheetah if that was a thing sorry i'm with you i'm with you that's her no i support that i like that actually hi her Thank that- you. literally honestly i just saw Brittany in the back of every movie set with a megaphone going like <laughs> Yeah, like, guys, listen, I have ideas. <laughs> Literally, honestly, and they'd be like, "Yes, Miss Britt." <sighs> yeah, okay, mm-hmm. of course. Anyway, but I anyway, think we're enough for this. Yeah, pretty much. We got Good. two short of it. We're filming two episodes today. Fun fact. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess you could do a couple shorter ones, and then we'll just shove them out there, crank them out there. Um, let us know in the comments, guys, what you thought of this film. Yes. Um, I will, uh, my opinion will never sway. So, <laughs> we've got people that are medium, people that hated it, and people that loved it. Let us know what you're We respect were. everyone's opinions here. That's exactly yes. right. Oh, hey. Um, wait, real quick. What did you guys think of the uh, Linda Carter cameo? I was going to say that. Oh, Nathan, I'm <laughs> Love. It was so beautiful. I thought that Love. was very funny. So, I. Done. I will be like ushering at work. So like I'm always seeing the tail ends of movies and I've seen that end credit scene like 20 times now. And every time I'm just smiling, just like, I know it's just cheesy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it's it. so good. It's so I good. I think they did it so cleverly because the fact that they were, oh my God, mm-hmm. what's the name of the character that she's playing? Oh, Asteria. 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 Yeah. Like I thought that was so clever and well done. Like a nice way to nod they, at her. Because I thought they she was- made her the amazon's greatest warrior that's beautiful yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was perfect and I think she's dead but obviously she's not so like in the third movie she should have a more prominent role yeah. like, a mentor figure be, would be really cool it'd be so cool having That'd her and awesome. work together like oh the power the power <laughs> the power would be, would be so cool. oh chef's kiss i'm, I'm yeah. gonna be amazing. yeah I thought it was perfect, honestly. I was wondering the whole movie. I was like, she can have a cameo. She can pop <gasps> in somewhere. That'd be cool. Oh, oh my god. Sorry. I did, I'm did. i pretty sure it's not the case, but it's also like, if you think about it, it could be canon for the CW-verse, because technically, Linda was the Madam President in Supergirl for a yeah. few seasons. It's true. And she, true. she has an invisible jet, so I mean... 
That's true. Hire That's her. True. <laughs> yeah, literally. So how do we get Melissa Benoist into Wonder Woman 3 is my question. <laughs> literally. Dude. Well, there's a multiverse. Oh, no, there's only one Earth now, isn't there? No. Well, there's but more. they combined... Oh, they combine the Flash and Supergirls and whatever, but there's still yeah. other Earths apparently. Oh yeah, that's right. There are other. Yeah, that's right, because they have like the Titans and everything. They're still. Why? Yeah. Yep. I don't yeah, know. That's true. That's so. What that's, within so one yeah. Earth there could be a what the Wonder Woman's there? So maybe Supergirl can just like. Okay. Yeah. Oh gosh, the power, the flavor that that would have. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Oh, that's beautiful. I need a draw. That's lovely. Honestly, oh gosh, I am. We should have an episode about Superman and Lois at this point. Um, yes, I was but... actually going to talk to you about that. I want, like, I, th- I think that's one that we should have a talk about. Yeah, I yeah. think you and I have different opinions on it, Katie, but also, like, I think our reasonings are both the same. You know what I mean? Mm. Let's okay. film it up because I feel like it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, let's watch after the premiere. Let's film it. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay, fair. I just want some more Supergirl. Um content but see that we agree. Nothing. I agree. I know. I know. But have and I feel started filming season six yet though? But yeah, think. they've I been have... filming. They've been have filming they? for months. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. It's like October, November. I have heard nothing. I, I didn't know. Was, but no, Melissa no, Melissa no. wasn't there. Melissa just went back like last week yeah. or something. She was on maternity That's leave. Because she just gave birth to a baby boy. Yes. yes. Yay. So cute. Um, but also Legends has been filming for how long? Where's the content? Hello? Do you feel Star Girl? Hello? What do you feel, do you feel like the the CW is like shoving away Supergirl because they have Superman and Lois, so they're yes. promoting that more. Yes. And yes. not Supergirl, I think I it's specifically like... a network problem, not an actor problem. A lot of people I are like, hitting on that. like a lot of people are hating on like Tyler Hecklin and the actress for Lois, and hating on like Melissa Benoist. Like, no, 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 no. This has nothing to do with the actors. This is, a, nothing, this is a whole network problem, yeah, not an actor problem. Like, the network can't market. The actors. The yeah. actors have nothing. They're just doing their jobs. At the end of the day, the actors are literally doing their jobs. They have nothing to do with this. Exactly. Literally nothing. I've been complaining a lot since, oh my gosh, foreshadowing for the next episode again, or our episode. We already established. Um, the next episode is going to be super yeah, close. I, my one problem I don't have with the show at this point is the actors. Where I'm like, the cast is fine. I haven't heard anything bad about the I cast. Agree with that. I love Hecklin to pieces. I'm so glad he gets to play Superman. Like, I love him as yeah. Superman. That's not the complaint I have. My complaints are all like behind the scenes, like production yeah. wise mm-hmm. and network wise. Right? Don't like, like, I'll see people commenting, like, oh, right, because we want to see a show about like angsty kids. Like, so I see comments. I'm like, why are you hating on the actors? Like, they're, they're yeah. just telling a story, and then someone's like, oh, so you prefer to have Superman and Lois over Supergirl? Me, personally, I'm like, I just love having all my t- like my comic book characters in multiple shows. And does it suck that Supergirl's ending? Yes. Do I want it to end? No. But that's not really in our control, and it's not really fair to people to be like, oh, they're shoving Superman and Lois to make way for Supergirls. Like, they, they always do this thing where they always push a show that's new and upcoming First, like they did it with Batwoman, they did it with Supergirl when it went into well, the CW. Marketing, like that's exactly. No, they don't exactly. Have and a lot of people are using that as like clout right. to be like, you know, like oh, they're shoving Supergirls. Like I don't think that's the intention. Is Supergirl ending? Yes, but like that wasn't really. I feel like that's like multiple like other reasons, not because they're trying to push it. It just one is unfortunately appearing that way. And, like, you have stupid, like, fanboys that'll be like, yeah, we have to do it. I'm like, okay, those people are stupid. But, like, you know, anyway, this is going to be a whole new discussion. Yeah. I don't think, um, I never thought, like, Supergirl ended specifically because of Superman and Lois. Like, I don't think that's the deal. Yeah. Because um, they wanted to move on. Because the storyline has gotten a bit. Also that. (laughs) I think it was a mutual. I think I heard, like, when it originally happened that it was a mutual thing. Yeah, like, it's yeah. Not like, all, it's not all the actors. They sign a six-year contract. Right. They yeah. Could. I was right. like, nobody's but... leaving early. Like, nobody's quitting the show early. Like, Melissa's did her six-year contract. Like, that's yeah. it. And that's Every, that's the true. viewers yeah. are going down. Like, all this stuff going on in the world is Melissa just became a mother. Like, I just think it was too many things where they're just like, let's just let's just yeah. end it. You know. Yeah. And when you think about it, like six seasons of a show, that's a pretty good effort considering nowadays shows don't get renewed. For like you know, one a couple of the, so six seasons is a pretty damn good effort. I, I think. if yeah. you go past four seasons, you're solid. Like yeah. I, usually seasons end after like three. So like if you're yeah. past that, yeah, then you're yeah, solid. Yeah. 
They're going well past 100 episodes, too, which I think is definitely... Exactly. They've done pretty well so far. I just hope the last season actually is good. It. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. We yeah. should wrap up this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it a lot. We'll do... Yeah. I'm going to do a lot of... Woo! Ranton. Do um, it. Do it. But anyway, um, so that's it for this one. We got a little shorter one, but we'll do, do some... Little short spurts, if you will, I guess, yeah. for the next yeah. few. Um, so uh, thanks for watching. If you made it through this whole thing, or listening, or listening, what like rating out of five, or what we thought the movie was out of five, rate the movie out of five. Yes, let I us agree. know in the comments. Yes, yes, yes. Rich. Also, recommendations on yeah. other episodes that we should do. I think Adam was yeah. asking, we say our final score of one oh. out of five. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Like, right. Oh, okay. Ten or five stars, right? right? Five stars. I think out of five stars, I gave Wonder Woman a three and a half. Fair, Nathan. Uh, probably give it a solid four. Mm-hmm. Katie, I'm gonna go with a four point two five. Love it, love it. And Emma, I'm gonna give it a two. Two out of Fair. five. Adam? I'm impressed um, just to hear that. 3.5 as well. 3.5? Yep. So if we take our combined scores and we divide it by the five of us, we have an average. Wonder Woman 1984 got an average of 3.45 stars out of five. Hello. Okay. That's, I feel like that's, that's, that's decent. I feel like that's solid. Yeah. But oh also let us know like in the comments, minutes. guys. Or yeah. DM us or whatever. Let us know what your out of five is for this yes 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 um so subscribe to everybody of course links will be below subscribe to game night crew we got a bunch of fun stuff coming up uh uh anyway and that's it so uh, like subscribe comment do some fun stuff talk about it we got a twitter (laughs) that i'm gonna link to um and that's it (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.